And we're joined in studio by two lovely gentlemen. We have Trevor Fisher, who's retail manager with Wines Direct. Good morning to you. And we are also joined by John Eustace, who's going to review some movies for us today. Good morning, John. Morning, Clara. Um, Let's just start with the wine. Uh, I know that wine is very popular at the moment. Um, I wonder, has it overtaken beer? Uh, I don't know about having overtaken it, but certainly the the popularity is huge. Um, but it's gone past the point where it's just being being bought and being drunk for the sake of it. People mm. have a real interest in it and a, an enthusiasm about learning a lot more about it now. Um, Am I allowed to mention certain brands which you'd remember from the eighties? Oh, fire away! Like, I mean, Blue Nun, <laughs> Blue Nun, Black, Black Tower, Black the old Piador came back in. Yet, yeah. um, no, we've we've come a long way from uh, from then, um, and even if if you look at various kind of wine courses and mm. qualifications mm. and things like that, um, an awful lot of those during the last number of years have not only been filled with people mm. looking to work in the in the trade, but also a huge amount of people just doing it out of a, out of a genuine interest for themselves as well. Mm. Um, and all you have to do is look at the thousands and thousands of different types of wine that you can come across now, no matter where you go, um, to see the the enthusiasm and demand that there is just from the from the public who appreciate good wine now. And you also hear it at restaurants, don't you? I don't know if it's the person that pretends they know what they're talking about that says, "Oh, a nice." Um Pinot Grigio would go fantastic with this meat or something like that. Yeah, oh, well, again, it's something we've actually found more over the last two or three years now that we'll have people coming in and obviously with maybe people going out a little bit less now at the moment um, that people might be putting together really nice dinner parties at home or putting more care in, into their cooking at home um, and part of that now goes hand in hand with, with choosing the right wine to, to match it. Um, if you spend four hours slogging away in the in the kitchen on a Saturday afternoon Put your picture it. That's it. I, I can't. Um, but the last thing you want to do then is uh, have all your hard work ruined yeah, by yeah. selecting something that can Completely clashes with the with the flavour of the food, wine wise. Well, fair dues for people for knowing. Let's start with this lovely white. So, what we're going to do today um, is we're looking at two two lovely, crisp, easy drinking uh, wines, both from Italy, um, and both of these are really good value for Bank Holiday weekend. They both fall in under twelve euros, so they're not they're not um, over exuberant. Um, and the white we're going to do is the most famous white from Italy, and um, this is a Pinot Grigio. Um, oh, speaking of, there you have it. You you preempted my my selection for the day. Sorry. Um, so Pinot. Grigio would be the most famous grape from uh, from Italy in terms of white wine. Um, a lot of people know it. And it's very, very popular. People really enjoy it. Um, and as with all our wines, this one comes from a very, very small producer, a uh, small family-owned producer. It's actually a yeah. guy called Antonio Brizzotto and his two sisters who make it. Um, very small production. And they're right up in the, the northeast of Italy. Um, and what you should get with Pinot Grigio is it should be very refreshing, very crisp and easy to drink. But the problem with some when they're made in really, really big quantities by some of the really big kind of factory or industrial producers is that sometimes before you even put the glass back down on the dinner table, the flavour's gone and oh, really? you're, you're looking to pick the glass up again. Um, and that's a sign basically that the wine wasn't really that well made and the quality of the grapes that went into making the wine weren't really that good. Yeah. Um, so with this one, and we'll have a taste of it now in a second, um, what you'll find is that it really fills your mouth up with these really refreshing kind of peach and pear and apricot flavours, but they linger around for, for quite a while. Um, they kind of give you a lot of enjoyment because the flavour hangs around your mouth for, for a long time. Um, so I suppose we'll all have a taste at half eleven in the morning. Well, you're slurping that there. I better play something that I forgot to do earlier. <laughs> I swear it wasn't the thought of alcohol that made me forget the bingo numbers. It was a genuine <laughs> mistake. Thanks to Sinead for reminding me there. That's it. Blame the wine guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're on the Pinot Gris show. And it's, we were testing it there and doing all this <laughs> gurgly things and stuff. And the That's other. it. It's, it's nice and light, isn't it? And you're right, it does That's hold it. P- Pinot Grigio should be, should be light and refreshing. Um, it's not supposed to be a very heavy, very rich style of white. But it still needs to have enough flavour that you know you feel like you're getting some some quality and value for your money, and that the right. flavour doesn't last for five or six seconds mm-hmm. and it's gone. Um, you know we've had our last sip while the the last piece was playing, um, and been talking ever since, and I can still taste it in the back of my yeah. mouth. It's still really fresh. It's still really enjoyable and flavoursome. Oh, I can. Yes, still tasting it. Still I think John might want a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Like I know that it's getting popular, more popular now to, as you say, stay in and cook meals. It is also getting more popular to stay in on a Friday or Saturday night with a DVD 
and maybe put up your feet on the on the couch and have a glass of wine in your hand. Now, John, would this go with a film, this wine? I think it would go with a takeaway in a film very well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I do. I think more and more people are staying in now. or You do hear more often that people are staying in, drinking a little bit before going out to the pub, just to kind of keep the costs down. And I think with the smoking ban as well, I think people do spend a bit more time indoors, uh, at home, drinking wine. So I think if you can get a nice, good quality wine like this at uh-huh. a decent price. yeah, At a decent price, which mm-hmm. is after you were saying but that there's actually more expensive of wines in the shop which you don't think are as nice very, very much so I mean there's um, there's there's oodles anything from you know 9 euros to 90 euros and above it's all a question of you know finding your finding your own taste and finding what you enjoy because if you buy if you like a particular type of wine and then you buy something completely different um, with a completely different flavour it might be five times the price oh, but yeah. if it's not to your taste then the you're still not necessarily going to going to enjoy it um, yeah. but the likes of this San Simone Pinot Grigio um, it's such a crowd pleaser it's really universal and if you're going to sit down and have a glass of wine on its own or with light food um, it's something that's soft and easy to drink but still has lots no and lots of quality it's about it it's too easy to drink and by the time the film is <laughs> <laughs> you'll be a little bit tipsy what films have you been to see John? OK well we've two to talk about this week uh, Horrible Bosses which opened in the cinemas yeah. last Friday and uh, Captain America the first Avenger which is opening tomorrow and which one are we going to start with? Uh, we'll start with Horrible Bosses please okay will I play it? yep yeah. you want it? it's 8.15am it's 18 year old Scott <laughs> if you want a promotion you gotta earn it <laughs> did I tell you that Harkin tricked me into having a drink at 8 o'clock this morning unless your boss isn't sexually harassing you see if this thing is working oh I can make out our little friend right there. Stop it. Ooh, Shabbat Shalom. Somebody circumcised. You know, yours doesn't sound that bad. We need to trim some of the fat. What do you mean by trim the fat? I want you to fire the fat people. You can start with large Marge. Marge, can you come in here, please? What? I thought he was going to give you a promotion. Yeah, no, he is. I have decided who I want to be our new vice president of sales. Me. What do you say? Nick, uh, please, we're in the middle of a meeting. Sorry. That's all right. I'll just attribute this to your drinking problem. You would have to admit our lives would be easier if our bosses weren't alive. You can fire Professor Xavier. You mean Hank? Creeps me out, rolling around all day in a special little secret chair. I don't care how bad our bosses are. We're not murderers. This little sweetheart right here? My fiance. Is gonna get a peek at my little photo album. You did all this while I was unconscious? Mm. That's my favorite. (laughs) I'm in! Let's kill this bitch! Oh, that was a bold word you left in there, Johnny, but we'll say nothing. Um... How how was that film? You that was out last week. Am I right in saying? It came out last Friday. Yeah, I think it's doing very well since it came out. I think uh, it's very enjoyable. It's very easy to watch. Um, it's pretty good comedy. Don't want to don't want to be too critical about it. Um, oh no, that means that you didn't really enjoy it. I uh, well no, I think comedies are are strange in that what some people think are funny, other people. Yeah. You know, don't find so funny. It's definitely got a lot of good things going for it. It's got a great cast: uh, Kevin Spacey, Jennifer Aniston, Colin Farrell, uh, Jamie Fox, <coughs> Jason Bateman. And it's weird that you do get a, a comedy with such a good kind of quality of cast. Um, so I think it definitely has that going for it. Um, it's a story of three friends who who all hate their bosses, and they decide after you know one unpleasant incident too many that uh, they want to basically get rid of them. So it's. Kevin Spacey's very good in it. He's kind of a sadistic, kind of control freak and nasty kind of character. And he's good at sadistic and control freaky, isn't he? He does it very well. He's got the voice and and the personality to match it. Um, Colin Farrell's very good. He's not in it that much now. He's a kind of a he's a, a coke cocaine loving stripper loving you know real sleaze bucket who likes to you know enjoy himself a bit too much in the in the office. And uh, then you have Jennifer Aniston, who's a uh, I suppose well, is Jennifer Aniston a turn off or a turn on? Well, you see, that's people. Th- that's the thing. I think they mentioned it in the trailer that the guy who has her as his horrible boss, he doesn't really have that much to complain about, really, because yeah. if you're being uh, to sound on PC now, if you're being sexually harassed by Jennifer Aniston, it's not the worst uh, job in the world. But um, she does it very, very well, and I'm sure an awful lot of people would have strong reservations about her character. But um, I didn't think it was that big g- a deal. In general, though, for particularly for a bloke, bloke for picking out a movie. If there's Jennifer Aniston, is that... Oh, no, it's a chick flick. 
I don't know. I have a bit of a soft spot for Jennifer Aniston, to be honest, going back a long way since Friends. Friends. So I, I'd be a little bit biased towards her. Yeah. How definitely. about you, Trevor? You haven't gone and seen it, have you? I haven't seen it yet, but I do want to see it. I think that. Why? Because the, the, Jennifer the tra- Aniston is. No, no, no. It just uh, it just looks uh, just looks like it could be could be up my street in terms of uh, in terms of a comedy. Yeah, I have to say, I wouldn't have. Uh, Are you saying that your boss is horrible? No, no, no for the position. Now. That's just not fair. Nobody can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Too many people can hear you. That's the problem. Um, let's move on to the red wine there. Perfect. So again, we're, we're staying in Italy with the, with the red wine. Um, and this is actually brand new. We only came across um, this producer back in, I think it was February when we came mm. across these guys. Um, and these people are in an area called Abruzzo. Um, and the family name is Nicodemi. And they're ma- it's made by a, a brother and sister team. Um, and the sister has a whose real name is Elena. We keep calling her Cher oh, because right. when we met them originally, um, she came down this staircase, and this six foot four leather clad lady walked down the stairs, and she was the spitting image of Cher of Sonny and Cher. So thing. you were in awe, but you were afraid. It might have had some sort of uh, sort of uh, 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 impact on the on the selection procedure. <laughs> now it might have clouded judgment a little bit. I can um, smell this already, by the way. Yeah, I think I think this is super. This, this is actually my this, this is my wine of the month. It's, yeah. I have a real real soft spot for this one. Is it um, pricey? It's not. Again, it's under twelve euros. Um, Sorry, I'm going in already. And but it's available both in in our shop in the Wines Direct shop mm-hmm. in uh, Loch Shiver Park in Mullingar. It can be bought on web as well from winesdirect.ie. Um, and the grape variety in this is Montepulciano, which is a it's a traditional Italian grape. Uh, it's been grown for hundreds of years mm-hmm. in Italy. Um, and when Montepulciano was done well. It can be very fruit driven, really smooth and elegant. Um, yeah. It's not light, it's got a good bit of body there, it's got lots of flavour, but very smooth at the same time. Um, it's not one of these wines that's, you know, very spicy or peppery. It's kind of easy but going and mellow and easy to drink. Oh, sorry, that's because I've already. While you two are having a taste of it, <laughs> I'm just going to play a piece of Captain America while the boys are having a taste there. Rogers, Stephen. Just give me a chance. Sorry, son. You're saving your life. General Patton has said that wars are fought with weapons, but they are won by men. You just don't know when to give up, do you? I could do this all day. Just to create the greatest army in history. I should be going with you. Look, I know you don't think I can do this. This isn't a back alley, Steve. It's war. But every army begins with one man. Five tries in five different cities. I can offer you a chance. He will be the first in a new breed of super soldiers. Why me? Because the weak men lose the value of strength, lose the value of power. That wasn't so bad. That was penicillin. We are going to win this war because we have the best men. Now, Mr. Stark. They will personally escort Adolf Hitler to the gates of hell. Wow, it sounds intense. Oh, it's dramatic stuff altogether now. Is uh, it action-packed all the way, start to finish? It's pretty, pretty much. Yeah, it's 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 the latest Marvel film, so it's uh, it's the, I think it's the fourth superhero movie of the summer after um, Thor and X Men and mm. the Green Lantern. So it's nothing really you haven't seen before. It's from Marvel Studios that have brought us Hulk and uh, Spider Man and Iron Man, and it's about the um, <coughs> the creation of Captain America. He starts off as Steve Rogers, who's a a small a wimp. Uh, a wimp. <laughs> if you want to say it like that. But he's, he's a small guy. He wants to get into the army and he tries over and over again. Um, but they won't let him in. Set during World War Two, until eventually his uh, courage and his pluck are, are noticed. And he, um, he gets drafted into a super secret uh, government program gets injected with a serum. De-wimpified. And he's de-wimpified in this amazing machine. I was thinking about it actually on the drive up that if you could actually get one of these machines that you could walk into, press a few buttons and you came out looking like this guy, I tell you, you'd be a millionaire overnight. Absolutely. I have heard that 99% of the female population will think he's quite dashing. He is. Um, well, you know, uh, and he gets touched straight away. The minute he comes out of the machine, the first thing a girl does is touch his biceps, which from a man's point of view, I have to, you know, <laughs> I have to take issue with that now. But, uh, <coughs> you know, to be honest, he, he turns into Captain America, 
Is the love interest, there is a love interest there, is it a bit tacked on? There's a tiny bit, but I, I think, you see, I think with films like this now, you kind of have to, you have to hit a, a kind of a certain few markers at mm. this stage. You have to have the, how the character is downtrodden, then you have to get how he becomes what he is, and then you have to have him fighting the bad guys. And, you know, they, they usually throw a girl in as well, just for good measure. And so is that ha- the kind of film now that if you had a nice glass of red wine on your hand, <laughs> that would be on the couch? I don't know, I think, no offence, Clara, now, I think you mightn't be the demographic they're aiming for it's more of a nine-year-old's film but oh, uh, no. if a glass of wine brings you back to that kind of age in your life then go for it by all means but it's you know it's it's enjoyable nothing you haven't seen before uh, great cast very well made but um, Mammy and Daddy on a Friday evening 8 o'clock uh, Mammy and Daddy can have a glass of wine while watching it to maybe ease the pain of having to watch a child's movie. I think I think Mammy would like it more because he walks around with his shirt off an awful lot but uh, yeah no. Is that a thumbs up or thumbs down or kind it's, of halfway in the middle? Yeah no it's good like uh, it's, it's very similar to um to Iron Man and Thor mm, which yeah. if you like those kind of films you like this very well made they do kind of tone down the American stuff like he was called Captain America because he was um, created during the 40s and he was a kind of a politically motivated character to drum up uh, patriotism for World War II oh, this right. was before Pearl Harbor uh, so that's why they gave him the name Captain America Thanks but, for that but you have to tell me about the wine now because we've actually only 30 seconds left which uh, time just goes too fast here What the wine um, obviously it wouldn't be one that you'd watch have with Captain America then but you'd have it sitting down on a Saturday night I think so and then yeah. it's, it's one of the few reds that I think mm. you can sit down and enjoy really mellow and easy drinking you don't need food with um, you don't have to have food with it but if you are going to have food even if it's just nibbles mm. crackers and cheese or pates or traditional Italian food you know pizza or lasagna or something works absolutely absolutely superbly you were telling me off air that it's the kind of wine that goes too quickly it can do in my house mm. it can do anyway <laughs> it can do thank you very much lads uh, for both of you for coming in this morning <laughs> Pleasure, um, thank you. Trevor Fisher, who's retail manager at Wines Direct, and John Eustace, who went and caught a few films for us. Thank you very much. Thank you.